Happy 2010 for everybody. Go out, party hard. Just do whatever you want. It's the last day of the year, let alone the last day of the decade. Double shot review. The Last Dragon and the G.I. Joe ROC. I'm going to get The Last Dragon out of the way first since one of the users asked me about it. G not G.I. Joe. Uh, the Last Dragon was directed by Michael Schultz, produced by Barry Gordon, and two others. I'll post the link of The Last Dragon on the description box later. The plot of the movie is simple. It's all about Leroy Green becoming the greatest martial artist, like his idol, Bruce Leroy. To do that, he has to reach the final level, possesses the glow. When a fighter reaches that level, he's the greatest fighter ever. Period. In order to become the last dragon, let alone the wheel of power, he has to fight villains, including the antagonist, Shonuff, the Shogun of Hollow. Now, I like the story. It's plain and simple. It's not too complicated. That's why I like that's what I love about the movie. Now, another pro, I love the action scenes. I love the martial arts moves and everything let alone the final battle between Leroy and Shonuff. That was great. If it wasn't for this movie, I would never became a martial arts film fan at all. I like the cast a lot. Most of them are no names. A couple of them are big names. Like Keisha Knight, Paul from uh, Cosby Show, Carl Anthony Payne II, Play the Cosby Show and Martin and Ernie Range Jr., a martial artist and an actor. So I like the I like the cast a lot. Vinny She looked real hot in that movie. And the music, some people say it's cheesy, but it's the eighties. What did you expect? I like the theme song of the The Last Dragon. The, I can't remember the song is The Glow or something. I can't remember. I like it. It's like over four or five minutes. And that's all I have to say about this film. This film, it, it's, it's an excellent film, but what keeps it from being a perfect film is I have an issue with Lord. Yeah, Leroy Green, Bruce Leroy. He comes off as this generic, robotic character. He comes out of his shell right after when he's gained the upper hand in that final battle against Shonuff. So, and he ends up having a love interest with Laura Charles, the TV music video host, let alone Vinity. I mean... It took him like, like almost the end of the film for him to come out of that shell. That's where I had a problem with it. So, my verdict of The Last Dragon, excellent. Excellent film. If you're a hip-hop or martial arts film fan, give this movie a shot. You'll like it. Now, as for... G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. G.I. Joe is a popular cartoon series. Let alone it, it wasn't in the comic books. Before the cartoon series, it was it was in the comic books as well. And they had toys out in the 1960s. It's not only known for you know cartoons as well as toys as well. I'm messing up on that G.I. Joe part. I apologize. On August 7th of this year, live action adaptation came to reality. Most movie fans were split with, with G.I. Joe ROC in terms of loving or detesting it. What do I think about this film? Well, my pros are 
the action scenes i really love it especially with ninja battles between storm shadow versus snake eyes I just loved it loved it the camera work was spot on the cast most of it when i heard, when i heard ray park was going to play as snake eyes my first thoughts were he's going to nail it He's going to nail that, that Snake Eyes character right down the middle. And I and I was right. And I'm, Most people who are fans of G.I. Joe or let alone Snake Eyes fans can agree, to, can, can, can agree with me that he nailed that part. The story is neutral. It's good because it's all about Joe's versus Cobra. Bad. It started to lose steam midway in the second half a bit. The cons I have issues with the one who plays Duke. Marlon Wayne's he's well he's neutral again. He's good for action, but when he's trying to get his swerve on, well, <clears throat> not working and can someone please tell me how in the world duke and baroness were in love with each other i'm still trying to figure that out because if my memory serves me right they don't like each other and if my memory serves me right as well baroness and destro love each other they can't even keep their hands off of each other Now, now a lot of people were complaining about Ripcord and Scarlet, because uh, Ripcord is black in a series. Ripcord is white. Okay, people need to calm down. A black man kissing a white woman. Whoop the damn do. Quit crying. Get over it. It's the 21st century. Shoot. And the flashbacks was really nice especially with snake eyes and storm shadow the one the heavy the what was it, the heavy duty character i think it would have been better if michael clark duncan played that role that's just me and cobra commander the in that fishbowl helmet are you serious come on they was going to put like like a claw with a cobra symbol over his head, but it would have been too much symbol, similar to the Ku Klux Klan, a.k.a. the Triple K's. So most people find it politically correct. They could have just made the Cobra Commander a helmet. The music, well, the music was average I mean I like the slow motion of the film but there was the felt like there was just too much of it the main selling point was the Eiffel the Eiffel Tower the Paris chase so I can't say anything too bad about this film well I did but not it's not as bad this film is not as bad or worse as you know, the um, Street Fighter Legend of Chun-Li or disappointing like Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. There's some improvement with this film. I mean, there could be some... The next G.I. Joe film, do I think it would be better than the first one? Who knows? My verdict of G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, good but not great. And with that, SA-17... Peace out. Happy 2010 once again.